same time. Uh, we're gonna have a video here in just a little while. And we're gonna show uh, show you more about that next week. But anyways, would you do me a favor? Would you help me welcome up my better three quarters, the very talented, very good looking Pastor Vanessa? Oh, 
slowly pulling me out of these places where I don't necessarily desire to be and been challenging me to grow in different areas of my life, not because I'm special, not because I'm super uh, amazing, although maybe I think that he might think that about me, but I believe that he desires to do that with each of us, that there is something he desires to do in our lives, and I'm so grateful that he's given me these opportunities. And the question or the thing that he's been challenging me with is this idea Imagine what your life would look like, would be like, if you were winning in all areas. Hashtag winning, right? Everybody wants to be winning, right? Imagine what your life would look like if you were winning in all areas. And I think if I were to sit down and personally interview each person in this room and say, okay, how are you winning in your life? You might be able to say, oh, well, you know, I just got a raise at work and I'm winning at work, but at home things are falling apart. It just doesn't make sense. Or I might be able to ask you, you know, how are you winning in life? And you might say, oh, I had this crazy, amazing uh, marriage, but my kids were driving me crazy. How many are with me on that one? Amen. Um, and so we can go through each area of our lives, but I believe that God wants to us to live a life more abundantly, that he wants us to not only be winning in one area or one part of our lives, but he wants us to be winning and growing in every part of our lives. And part of us winning is being able to recognize and identify what is a win. Because sometimes we can get so caught up in what the world views as winning, right? If I have X amount of dollars in my bank account, then I'm winning. Or if I have X amount of followers on social media, then I'm winning. Or if I have, you know, the most perfect uh, room uh, dress children that I'm winning or you know whatever it might be if I had all straight A's then I'm winning but what if I get a C am I still winning and so I believe that God is going to be challenging us over the next couple of weeks and so if you're just trying to figure out what does God want you to do and what does it look like for you to win in every area of your life I want to encourage you to come back and hear not only from my story and Pastor Zach's story and how we've been challenged in these ways but there are going to be um, different stories that we're going to be sharing along the way. And so this week we're going to be talking about heart. And I love heart. I heart heart. You know what I mean? Heart is something that, that is it's so uh, focused on. We focus on heart a lot when it comes to church, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? That is, I'm glad somebody knows their Bible, thank you. Uh, and so we focus so much on heart. In fact, Jesus talks about heart over and over and over. But before we get there, we always like to, to ask maybe a, a little question or do a little mixer. And so this week, um, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And um, it's very non-spiritual, but roll with me, okay? So we're going to, uh, how many of you guys have ever seen in uh, either on award shows or magazines or something along those lines, uh, there's a section called Who Wore It Best? Have you guys heard of this? Okay, okay, okay. So uh, maybe some, not all, okay. Uh, well, we're gonna, I'm just gonna ask you, okay, we're just taking a poll here in the room. So I'm gonna show a few pictures and we're gonna decide um, which person, I don't even know the names of these celebrities, okay? So we're just gonna decide, we're gonna say, um, so if you're saying like this, we're gonna say left or right. And so uh, all you have to do is just raise your hand, okay? So, okay, so let's see the first one. You guys ready? I don't think you're ready. Like, some of you are not. Oh, 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 Right? How many of you say Beyonce? 
just about everyone. Hi, I keep getting some love here. Steve, Beyonce, I know you're watching. We love you, Elevate. Come visit us. Uh, all right, next one. Okay, don't be mad, you guys. Don't be mad. Okay, final one. See, this is what the Lord said to Samuel, and, and we look at 1 
1 Samuel, uh, chapter 16, verse 17, if you're taking notes, and if you have not read 1 and 2 Samuel, do yourself a favor and, and start there. If you're like, the Bible is so weird and confusing, start here. It's like, it's like a novella. It's like a Korean drama. I mean, you read it from start to finish, and you're like, I just want to know what happens, right? It's a great novel. It's a great, it's one of the greatest stories ever uh, told and written in it. And um, if you want to dive into that more, Pastor Jack leads a group on Thursdays where they go verse by verse, and they've been doing this for years. And it's incredible to see just the, the kind of depth um, that you find in the book of uh, the books of First and Second Samuel. So it says, the Lord said to Samuel, He said, "Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People." Now, if you're a person, you can raise your hand because this is all of us. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is so important, you guys, is understanding that if I'm going to be closer to God and I'm going to be more aligned to God, then I need to start looking at people's hearts. That maybe I need to stop making judgments about what I see on the outside and just allow the Lord to work on the heart and allow the Lord to change the heart. And I believe when he does this, and when we get closer to him, we realize that it's so cool to be right next to him because then we begin to see the beauty in every person around us. We begin to see and understand what God desires to do in their lives from a heart perspective. A heart is so important when it comes to this series and it's so important when it comes to allowing the Holy Spirit to change us from the inside out. And so I want to share, we did an interview this week with a couple that's been with us from day one, and um, I want to share this because I think during this series, I want to highlight different people's hearts and different stories of victory of what is happening in people's lives. And so this um, video is about 10 minutes long. I want you to take a look at this interview. So we're the Wachizukis, and these are our fur babies. This is Daily. And this is Charlie. As your life partner. I'm kind of uncomfortable, right? Like, <laughs> your life elevated. <laughs> Hi, we're uh, Del and Sean from Mochizuki. Well, I'm Del. And I'm Sean. I'm Sean. And uh, we've been going to Elevate for almost two and a half years, uh, ever since uh, we were in the Bone Gardener living. I think, for me, it's... it's oh, wait, look at the camera. Okay. For me, I'm in a period of transition right now. And just a little bit of background on myself. Um, my entire image and self-worth was wrapped around my career and my ability to provide um, for myself and for my family. Your identity. My identity. And um, right now I'm in the middle of transitioning from a previous career into a new career. And so really my life has been the breadwinner for our family. And it's been a transition for us. Um, it's been a transition for me. And so when we talk about what's going on right now in my life, there's just a lot of different changes. I, I'm realizing that this is a season of just waiting. You know, it's transition is never easy, and um, being patient isn't easy. I'm just realizing that right now there's something that I need to be learning about, you know, myself and this marriage that we have and this changing dynamic that we have. Um, and then also learning about this new profession that I'm going to be moving into, and it's, um, it can be frustrating at, at times, uh, but I realize that it's just a part of it, and I just need to do this well so that I can move into this next season. And so one thing that I've been doing is been focusing on my health. And um, for those of you who know who know us, Dell has always been hammering me about being more healthy, eating healthy, uh, working out, just being more active. Um, I knew your face was looking like yeah. so Yeah, so you're like, you're looking at this for my birthday, it's coming in handy now, so I've really taken my health, um, it's, an import, it's important to me, and um, something that I'm really placing an importance in, it's a priority in my life now. But I think more so too is, I think the reason why it's important to take care of your health 
It's because it's really honoring the body that God has given you, right? I think it's, it's so important to remember that and use that as part of your why when you need that motivation to work out or to eat healthier. It's really because you're trying to honor the gift that God has given you, right? And has given your family, right? Like your family members are affected by your health, right? Like, so if something happens to you, that's really gonna, gonna affect them. And so, um, and you know, ultimately that's really why I want Sean to be healthy. You know, I've been on this journey for the past month and um, I'm, re- I'm realizing that this discipline that I'm building um, is something that you know, can be applied to say my relationship with the Lord in terms of my prayer life, in terms of getting into the Word. Um, I'm also realizing that if I can be disciplined with my body, I can be disciplined at work. Right? So it's not only just um, you know working out, but it's this discipline that I'm building here is going to be spilling over into other aspects of my life. Well, Hey, like she's way more successful than I, you know. 
Um, but we're a team, and like the successes that you're enjoying now at work and professionally, it's like, dude, that's my wife now. You know, that's um, that's my my partner, and um, I think the Lord has really changed my heart and. I, I like the fact that I'm maturing and being able to see beyond just what's going on for myself, but what's going on in our team. Yeah. And also, how do you define success? And I think before, Sean and I, we used to have this Excel spreadsheet where we would project out our lives, like we need to have this much income in order to buy this house, or we need to have X amount of dollars in our bank account, and, and savings, and whatever. And um, I think slowly what we're learning is that success is not just measure, it's not dollars, you know. When I look at um, the bum gardeners, they have such a rich life. That to me is success. If you look at their kids, and they're just such a blessing, right? Like that itself is, is God, you know? And, 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 and Sean and I, for us, we just really are so inspired by that. And we're learning that success is not defined by your bank account. You know, it's not defined by your title. Success is defined by the, the relationships that you have, the people that you have an impact on, right? It's defined on, on how much time you spend with God, you know, how close are you to the Lord? And I think that itself is one of the most important things that I learned from Elevate and from, from knowing Pastor Zach and Pastor Vanessa. <laughs> Your life elevated. Do you have a question for me? Okay. Well, we could just do the altar call right now. Let's just give our hearts to Jesus. That is amazing. Thank you guys for sharing your story. Isn't that amazing? Um, I, love, I love hearing people's stories because it, it helps you to understand that you're not alone. And it helps you to understand part of your story and part of your journey and what God is teaching you. And so today, um, I'm going to just touch a little bit more on this idea of heart. And as I was praying, um, this scripture always comes to mind for me. And it's in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It's one of my favorite all-time scriptures. And before, when I first heard it, it didn't make sense to me at first. It says, above all else, it means the most important thing at the top of everything, above everything else. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And if we can begin to understand this and, and live this way, that we're in a place where we're guarding our hearts. And I always used to think that that meant like, guard your heart against sin. You know, don't let sin come into your heart. And although that might be part of the truth, I believe that part of guarding our heart is being protective about what we allow to come into our heart and what we allow to go out of our heart. Because another proverb that's my favorite, I didn't quote it today, but it, it says that our hearts, um, that whatever is in us, that is in our heart, that it will come out through our mouths. That whatever is the abundance of the heart will come out through our mouths. And so what is in your heart will eventually come out. And so it's important to guard what not only what you bring into your heart, but what you allow to come out of your heart. And allowing the Lord to set up guardrails around our hearts and saying, hey, what kind of things am I measuring success by? I love that you use that, that um, analogy. That's the thing that really spoke to me is what is your measure of success? Because I think it is so easy to find our measures of, of success out there on what everyone else is doing, on what everyone else's life looks like, on what everyone else is saying, and how everyone else is doing. But it's really important that we understand what is God's measure of success for us? What does that look like? And if I'm allowing my heart to align with his, and I'm allowing my heart to be connected with him, and I begin to understand and walk with him and know what it is, to have a heart that longs for him, to have a heart that loves him, to have a heart that serves him, to have a heart that reaches out like he reaches out, because he is the greatest example of this. I want to talk about this before we close out this time together, and, and this is a word that sometimes is very confusing. In fact, if you're new to church or new to um, to, to faith, it's, it can be very confusing, and the words uh, condemnation and versus conviction. That there are these two different kind of things that happen in our heart when we're trying to figure out what does God want me to guard my heart from and what 
does he want me to guard my heart for? And I always used to think that, oh, well, let's just guard your heart so that you don't get your heart broken. And so I would put up uh, all of these uh, fences around my heart, and I wouldn't let anyone get super close. Only one or two people could get really, really close, because if they got close, they might hurt me. Maybe some of us, we've been living our entire lives like this, with all of these fences built around our hearts, and we don't want to get hurt, because what if people uh, hurt me, or what if people judge me, or what if people are going to say about me, or what if people know really what's in my heart? Would they still like me? Would they still be my friends? Would they still um, desire to be around me? And I want to talk about this for just a minute, is the difference between these two. Conviction is from God, and condemnation is from the enemy. How many of you know we have an enemy that is fighting uh, against us and our relationship with God? That conviction is from God. Conviction is saying, hey, wait a minute, something isn't right. It's this kind of red light. It's this alarm that goes off and saying, hey, there's something I need to tune into here. There's something I need to pay attention to here. And I love this because it kind of lays it out real simply. If you're trying to figure out, hey, is this an idea that I have or something that I need to do that is that is a conviction of mine, or is this something that I'm feeling bad about, I'm feeling guilty about? How do I know? What is the difference? Uh, conviction leads to life. That it's not just, hey, uh, you shouldn't do that. It's, you shouldn't do that because there's a better way. There's an easier way. There's a less sorrowful way. There's a way that, that is not so difficult. Conviction ends in joy, and condemnation ends in sorrow. Conviction makes us want to change, and condemnation makes us think we can't change. How many of you guys have ever thought that before? Nothing is ever going to change. No matter how hard I try, maybe in one area of your life, everything else is like, yay, it's perfect, it's wonderful, it's magical, but there's one area of your life that you just keep, oh man, every time I get to this part of my life, every time I get to this area of my life, I just can't get a break. I just can't, it just doesn't seem to be working, it just doesn't seem to be coming together. It just, I can't, and you, when you adopt these mindsets that are not from God, and it makes you think that you can never change. Why do I mess up everything? Why is this never going to change? Why do I keep finding myself in the same place over and over and over again? The conviction of the Holy Spirit makes you want to change. There's something different that happens. Conviction leads to new identity in Christ. And we know that the opposite of conviction leads to old identity and sin. That we begin to say, oh, I just mess up all the time. Well, I just can't get it right all the time because I'm just like this and everyone in my family is like this and my grandma's grandpa was like this and my grandma's grandpa was like this and, and so on and so forth and we always just struggle with this because this is how our family is. But I believe that there is something different that happens when you begin to say, no, I have a new creation in Christ that God has genuinely changed my life and I'm not just doing this so that I can make everyone else happy, but I'm doing this because it leads to something greater. Conviction brings specific awareness of sin where you say, hey, wait, I know I shouldn't be doing that, and I'm not doing it just because everyone says not to do it. I'm not doing it because the Holy Spirit is convicting me, and when I do it, I, f I, I don't feel right. There's something not right about it. And it bring, um, condemnation brings vague uncertainty about sin. You're like, ah, is it really right or wrong? Is it really, is there, I mean, is there really a line? Conviction looks to Jesus. Condemnation looks to self. And then the final thing is that conviction is a blessing and condemnation is a burden. And what we know about this is that Jesus talks about this, that his burden is light. That he doesn't, when you feel heavy, when something's heavy on your heart and you're like, oh, I feel so bad, I feel so guilty, I feel so troubled, I feel so, oh, I'm a horrible person. Have you ever thought these thoughts, maybe not you, but I know moments in my life where I just, ah, I just can't get it right, and I feel so heavy and so heavy burdened, that that is condemnation. But when I say, man, I feel really bad, I want, I, I, want to, I want to do it different. I want to do it better. I want to make a change that is a lasting change, that there's a difference, and this is how we can tell the difference. And in fact, Romans 8, uh, verse 1 says this. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That when you are in Christ Jesus, that when you're connected to him, that when you're understanding your relationship with him is a proximity to him, and you're saying, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here every day of your life, and you're, you're making an intentional effort that you don't walk in condemnation, that you don't walk in a bunch of guilt, that you can actually say, hey, wait a minute, I do not have to feel guilty about making mistakes 
or about sinning, that there's something different that happens when we're walking in unity with Christ. I love this other scripture in 2 Corinthians, and you can write these down and, and study them a little bit later throughout the week. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. This is when um, Paul was writing a, a letter to the, the church of Corinth. He's writing this letter, and, and as he's writing that, if you've ever read, uh, um, read any of the New Testament, you know that sometimes he uses very strong words to address the church, right? He's using very strong words to address the church. He says, yet yeah, now I'm happy, not because you were made sorry, because the words that he shared, he was happy that he was able to share the truth with the church, not to make them feel bad, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so you were not harmed in any way by us. In other words, the Holy Spirit came in and he made you feel sorry, and he made you say, wait, wait a minute, there's something not right here. We need to make a change, and we need to change and pivot direction, go this way, because the Holy Spirit is guiding us. And then verse 10 says this, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. So there's a difference. There's a difference between saying, hey, I feel bad and I'm going to make a change. And I'm not feeling bad because I feel guilty or somebody's trying to make me feel bad. But because I genuinely know that something's not right about this situation. Something's not Something's not settled in my heart about this. And it's not about this outward thing that anyone um, can see. It's more about what's happening inside of our hearts. It's more about allowing the conviction of the Holy Spirit to sink into those little pockets in our hearts that may be um, just between us and God. Mm -hmm. And then when the Holy Spirit comes in, that we do feel bad. And we say, wait a minute, I feel, I feel like just something's not right about this. And I want to change because I want to be a better version of myself. I don't want to change so everyone on social media can like my posts. I don't want to change so everyone can say, hey, good job, high five, you're wonderful, you're amazing, you're awesome. I don't want to change for any other person, but I want to make a genuine change in my life and in my heart because it's the conviction of the Holy Spirit that leads us to repentance. And what repentance means is when we turn from what we were doing and turn from our way and our ideas and our thoughts and we turn toward God's way and God's ideas and God's thoughts. It's a very simple thing. And this happens to us on the day. And sometimes we can be so caught up in our day, so caught up in what's going on that we miss it. But I believe that God wants to challenge us as a church to grow in this area of heart, that we understand the difference between, I don't just feel bad about this, I don't feel guilty about this, and keep going on to do it. But there's like a deep sorrow in my heart. Like when I do this, I just want to cry because I know it's not, it's not okay. That's the difference. That it's not hovering over you and making you feel bad. But there's something that clicks inside of us that changes internally. And the Holy Spirit allows that to happen because he is such a gentleman. I love that about him. He doesn't just, he doesn't beat us up over like the ways that we make mistakes or we sin. He's not like, hey, hey. you know, he's not a mean and mad and aggressive God. In fact, he's such a loving God that he says, come here, come close. Let's be close. How did that make you feel? When you did that, when you said that, when you went there, when you did that, how did it make you feel? And I don't know about you, but when the Holy Spirit convicts me of things, I usually just weep. I say, it didn't make me feel good. I shouldn't have said that to my husband. I shouldn't have said that to that person. I shouldn't have acted out even though I really wanted to. And I think it's human nature just to say, oh yeah, well you, you know what? And just let it go. But I think it takes a really strong, disciplined person to in your heart let the Holy Spirit give you direction and say, hey, it's time to make a change. And I believe that God wants to change our hearts more and more to make us more like him. And every week we ask 
the same question at the end of our service because this is a question that only you can answer. Only God can judge me. This is a, this is a question that really you get to answer. You get to spend a moment with God. And on the back of your bulletin, there's a space where you can write that down or you can pull out your, your phone and just write it on your phone and your notes. And I want you to seriously consider this question. What is God speaking to me? That maybe as you were listening to Dylan and Sean's testimony about identity and just some of the things that, that, that they're walking through and going through in this season, you said, oh my goodness, that is my story. Something about what they shared ministered to you in a way that it just, there was just one phrase that changed your heart. Maybe as I was talking about the difference of condemnation and, and conviction, and, and you've been kind of trying to figure out, is, is do I feel bad because because it's wrong, or do I feel bad because everyone else wants me to feel bad? What, what, why do I feel bad about this? And maybe the Holy Spirit was saying, that's the conviction of my spirit, that I, that I have better for you, that I know better for you, that I want better for you, that I desire better for you, and you desire better for yourself. And so in this moment, if you just take about 30 seconds to just write down one thing, maybe it was one of the scriptures that you want to go back to and just kind of take some time this week and really study it and say, what does this mean for me? And then in just a moment, I'm going to pray with you as, as we dismiss. those ways 
that we stray, those ways that we get stuck, those ways that it feels like it's not working, those ways that it feels like we keep trying and failing. We just repent right now, each of us, right now. Would you, sit back? Would you just say it under your breath or out loud that I repent? And I'm choosing to turn toward you. And I'm choosing to run toward you and not away from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to invite you guys to stand real quick. I'm going to say one final prayer of blessing over you as we go. And I know we kind of ended on a very serious note. But what I want to do also is I love to, to hear like the, the real story of what's happening. And, um, and maybe if you're just like, you feel the Holy Spirit is just like, your heart is kind of still pounding and, and you're still processing through what's happening or what, what you're going through, I want to be uh, make myself available to pray for you. And um, so I'll be up here in the front if you, if you need additional prayer and, and um, I would love to do that.